Um, Carlos, thank you for coming from South America via Mexico, as I understood. And uh, glad to meet you face to face. Looking forward to your presentation. Thank you, Annie. Okay, you want to? Yes. Okay, I'm Carlos Lucias. I work for NG Voice, one of the IMS companies that are uh, behind IMS for Camellia. And I'm going to be talking about an introduction to IMS application servers. And I'm going to try to make this really fast. So, what is an application server? It's a component that provides services to the end user. I mean, this is kind of obvious. You have to provide uh, services to your users to retain them. And the right way of doing that in the IMS infrastructure is by creating application servers. It's a natural way of adding new functionality to an IMS core. I mean, you have a pretty complex infrastructure, the IMS, and you don't simply go to the SCSCF, the Serving Consensual Control Function, and write a type C code into it to a new functionality. The right way of doing it is by creating an application server and connecting that application server to the to the server concept control function. It's a seed endpoint most of the time. A seed endpoint because it's it most of the time, like 90% of the time it replies to the call, it answers the call, and uh, offers service a service upon a, an audio channel or a video channel or a data channel in general. And most of the time because of the following slide. So how does application server behave? The user agent will have both originating and terminating. This kind of tied to IMS uh, naming convention. Originating means that the application server will call to a, to a user that is in, in the untrusted part of the network, which is the internet. And it, it can, for example, be used to create an application server that will do a wake up call, for example, at the hotel. Or you will be, you will have an, an user agent for terminating calls, which is the the usual way you have the application server that replies to the call, offers the service after replying that, and that's it. Uh, the user agent that we all know. We have a seed proxy. A seed proxy. Yeah, in in, the, in this case, you will receive the the seed measures. The seed proxy will probably do some 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 header, seed header mo modifications, and maybe some. SDP modification, add something to the SML and put itself in the path so that when the serving call session neutral function receives a new message, it will send it back to the to SIG proxy. We have a SIG redirect server. A example for this could be an application server that detects when the user is has moved. So it will reply with a 303 or, or 3xx to the serving call session control function, put in the new position of the of the customer of the client in the contact, so we will traverse back to the user agent, and the user agent will, will generate a new invite that will avoid the path that that previously took. Um, we have this SIP back to back user agent, which is basically two user agents glued together. In this case, uh, is uh, the application server replies the call, replies the call, and usually generates a new call because of, of its back to back user agent nature. So this application server could be used, for example, to create a, a very tiny billion application because it has the capacity of replying the call and co connect to the HSS, which is the main database on the, on the IMS. And in that case, it could retrieve the credit of the, of the customer and allow the, the call only if, and only if the, the, the user has enough credit. So these are some examples of application service. We have the present service, everyone knows it. We have conference breaches. Uh, we actually built an, uh, an application server for this for the Kamali work. And what it basically does is to answer the call and to create a conference breach in a very fancy way. We <coughs> practically Connected to the to the IMS core by NG Voice and it just worked. Just like that. We have text to speech applications. We can, for example, use Asterix with with ESP Linux command to send them a text and get a, an audio audio version from that text. Is fancy for some applications. We have the billing apps. The perfect example was the the one that I previously said about with the back back to back user agents. We have the IDRs for checking voicemails, for checking 
uh, bills or for for general setup of a telephony environment. And the sixth one, etc. Because any SIP appliance could be perfectly an application server. You only have to speak SIP to the server concession control function, and that's it. So where do I plug my uh, my application server? This is a basic overview of the uh, IMS infrastructure. I have to explain uh, a very important part of the registration to obtain this very important document that, that is used for the S server, the service call central control function, to route the call uh, according to those rules that you download in the in the user profile. So we have our user, that is the trusted part. It locates at the proxy server the uh, general DNS mechanism. We is, uh, the proxy server selects an, an interrogating call central control function, the I server. It has a list and it can select any a, a, any of the I server that it has in the list. The I server will try to identify the, the client, will try to actually identify if the, the client is actually a, a part of the IMS, in case it does, it will get back to this point and via a round robin algorithm generally, will go to a serving concession control function. It will send that message. Later, the serving will notice that the user the PCIe is not registered. So it will get the authentication vector from the HSS. And with, the, with that information, it will download the user profile. And that user profile has this very important piece of information named initial filter criteria. And with, the, with those rules, which basically looks like XML5, we're going to see in a, in a few seconds. With those rules, it will, ever, it will be able to identify if the user is actually trying to reach another user or if it's trying to use a service that we provide via our IMS application. So where do we plug? We plug exactly there, next to the S server. It has to be connected to this piece of information, to the piece of, of the IMS infrastructure. Optionally, it can be connected to the to the Hamptons Prairie server. This is optional because the application server can be perfectly uh, outside of a trusted network. But the connection up to the HSS is on, only possible if the application server is part of the of the home network. So this connection is optional, and this connection via SIP is mandatory. So application tr server triggering. This is a very important piece of documentation that we don't for the S during the registration. This is XML, pure XML. We have our IMR subscription with the private ID of the customer. It has a, a public ID. It can, you can have a lot of public ID where any of those, all of those have to be pointed to a single private ID. We have the initial future criteria, just this. We have the conditions. We have the expressions, we have the, the server definition, and this expression part actually is a is a if statement. This is equal to if method is invite, and the request you write starts with zip colon conf. You will have to this invite will have to be forwarded to this application server, which is zip conference application server dot imf dot dot com. This is what, how, uh, how the user profile looks, and when the call arrives to the S server, it will use this expression, expression will be translated to a, in, on, to a literally an if statement, and if, in, in case it's evaluated to true, it will go to an application server. This is the basic IMS call flow. When you have the user calling, it reaches the proxy call function, <coughs> function. you have some integrity checks, it's Everything is okay. You forward it to the S server. You don't have to go back to the I server directly because this is a call initiation. There are some zip headers in, involved in routing during registration. So if everything is okay, we go here. We read the initial feature criteria. If we match, match our rule, we'll send it to the application server. Otherwise, we will try to identify the if the user intended to call another user. We will send a location information request to the HSS to actually try to get the contacts of those users. In case we find anything, we are going to contact the colleague. 
Otherwise, we are going to fail and, we'll, and the failure message will trace back to the user engine. So, in summary, how I, I configure an, an application server? With an initial filter criteria, the application server definition, and the trigger point. The trigger point is the if condition, the application server definition is basically the CPU write to which you are going to send your, your seed message. This is a real world version example by VoiceBoot CRM application by NG Voice. We have something that looks much better than doing it by hand with an XML file. We have our video conference application server. The video conference is defi defined here. We have a seed fully qualified domain name, which will point to conference crwdf.com at port 5070. And we have the condition here. The condition is if request URI matches SIP comes, then send it to the application server. This application server actually is working now. This is a, a valid uh, request URL. And to show you the power of an application server, this if you register to this URL and you call uh, using this this URI, you will actually enter to a room that is network, the, whose name is conf. And if anyone comes, uh, calls now, will be able to to have a conference with itself. So what can I use to you to build an application server? We have for example the JSC library, which is a C library for JavaScript for Word RTC. You can perfectly build an application and an IMS application server with this because this will simulate the uh, this is they will add as a uh, as a user agent. You have asterisk and free switch. They are fairly common and well known. I don't have to explain. Uh, we have Moisense, which deserves special attention because it's, it's very powerful. It is written in Java and has a lot of tools for building user agents, for building complex projects that are related to void or seed in general. It even has a diameter connection. You, you could literally create an application server that is so complex that it could connect to the HSS the uh, diameter connector and retrieve information from the main repository of information in the IMS core, the pump server. Um, the only thing that I dislike about Movisense is the is the Slee approach, the Slee approach that they, that they took because to me and to a lot of people uh, I talk with, uh, it's very complicated and counterintuitive. It's event driven, but it's very different from what I'm used to. So this is a practical example. We had to create an application server with the following characteristics. To serve as a conference room, to accept all your video calls, to support all of the transport, TCP, TLS, UDP, and web sockets, and support most common audio video calls, and all of the transpoint that, that is implied. So how do we do it? We have our IMS network running in Germany, in virtual machines mostly. And we have used a uh, digital OSAN VPS. We set up uh, an, an instance that is a little bit more than the average. It has one gigabyte of RAM and one core, two cores of processor. We needed that amount of power because uh, transcoding is usually time consuming and computer expensive. So. We needed to create a conference server for as an application server for our IMS core. We set to web for open source conference servers because we had no intention of building one from zero. So we found, we found um, open telepresence. I'm sure some people are familiar here with open, tele or open telepresence by Dubango. And that actually is a very good option. It has everything. You practically can ignore everything else and just use it. But it was a little too complicated to start to configure, and it was a challenge, a challenge for us because you have to use uh, install a script and connect it to the IMS core, and it will it should work at least. We didn't even try. So we kept searching, and we found a, a Java version, a Java version of it, uh, of the the one that the people from I think they are Telestacks, I can't remember exact name, the one that that uh, do movie sense and it was in Java and we don't like Java so much so we search again. 
and we found the Open MCU. Open MCU is an original project, but there is a fork, a version that, that was made by so from Russian people, and it actually worked. It didn't work quite well because it had some misimplementation of of the tip signaling, and we have to patch it, like two or three patches. I didn't polish them, but I will do it afterwards. And after applying those patches, <laughs> we were actually able to install the OpenCU in the VPS server cloud. And we connect, we put a camera in, in front of it because it only supports UDP and TCP as transport. We need also web, web socket and TLS. So we had to put a camera in front of it so for, to complete all of the feature list that we wanted. Um, went up with this result. This is a, an, a screenshot of my RIA, RIA application for Android, the pay version. We have a Twink application, a very old user agent that is speaking DSM now in this example. We have voice boot phone, which is a modified version of CC Simple that we built for, for our IMS. It is basically a CC Simple plus uh, video codecs built in and credit checking, some customer information, did a customer call and stuff like that. And real time, which is the one that, of which I took the screenshot. So this is GSM, this is H24, H264, and this is EPA, <coughs> all the codes. And are all, or are mixed together by open NCU. So there are some captions, they are added to the bottom of every image. And it just for just like that. We install it in the VPS, we created <coughs> the initial filter criteria on the web page, and every call that start with conf will go from the S to the application server directly. So in conclusion, application server are extremely useful. They are very easy to do, right? Really, really easy. You don't have to be an IMX expert to do it. I am not an expert myself, and I was able to do it like with all of the Camellia experience that I have, all the Astro experience that I have, and of course C programming. But I didn't need any IMS concept to install it and to connect it to the to the IMS port. And you probably know already how to build one because everyone here knows about Void and knows about C, so you are capable of building an application server for the time that IMS takes over the world. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Looks so simple in slide. <laughs> <laughs> I think this topic doesn't require pretty much questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> questions. Is it easy to Sell IMS in a cloud because typically the because you use some cloud system there, typically the operator like to own the infrastructure and they like to see big fridges from your yeah. experience. Like fridges, you know? Big yes, 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 yes. I mean I meant trying to target it to the large operator where I'm trying to change that point of view to something more simpler that everyone here could be able to use to actually notice its power and to for the final to get some more adoption of the IMS infrastructure. So that's why we are switching to cloud now and creating the voice blue service based on the IMS that we have. Okay. Then so thank yeah, you. It should should be easier to try at least <laughs> play with it if it's available there. Thank you again for your long trip and coming and all the contributions from the